Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, it is now 9.30, and so I resume the hearing. Um, before we do brief introductions, um, is someone from the, from the council side, or, or indeed Carol, going to um, do the housekeeping? Oh, I thought Carol was going to do that. Yeah, um, I, I did too. Um, I, I think she's off doing something else at the moment, but perhaps, yeah, okay. Um, I'm not going to do a full opening this morning because I don't think that's um, likely to be necessary, but what I think will be helpful is if we do um, very brief um, introductions. Um, so if I could ask the, uh, the, the council first. Yes. Well, as you know, David Elvin QC with Mr. Mr. Matthew Henderson with me. Uh, and I'll ask my team for today to introduce themselves and, and what, they've been, what they're doing. So I'm uh, John Keyes from uh, Cushman and Wakefield. I've been helping the council on the university's uh, space and land requirements. Good morning, I'm Jane Healy-Brown from Arup, supporting the Council on Greenbelt Matters. Can I just say, I think um, others might find it helpful, <coughs> excuse me, if, uh, well, when you're speaking, if you could pull the, the microphones um, sort of a little bit closer to you, it, it does um, make quite a, quite a difference. Becky Eads, Head of Planning and Development Services at City of York Council. Yeah, can I ask that everyone takes a seat, um, please? Thank you. Councillor Claire Douglas, uh, City of York Council and York Labour Party today. Um, can, I, can I just check, um, Councillor Douglas, are you here on behalf of the council? No, sorry. I'm on, here on behalf of York Labour Party. Okay, thank you. Morning, Ian Late from Caddick and Oakgate Group, here on behalf of Langwith Development Partnership. Uh, Tim Whitaker, um, Principal at Ascombe Bryan College. Uh, William Woolley here on behalf of St Peter's School. Uh, Paul Tucker, uh, Queen's Council, on behalf of St Peter's School, Ascombe Bryan, York St John University and York University. And Janet O'Neill for the same four clients. Good morning, Nick Coakley from York St. John University. Morning, uh, Rob Hickey, Chief Operating Officer at York St. John University. <coughs> morning, Inspector. Um, seems to have been rather a long time. Um, Councillor Matt Waters representing Osborwick Parish Council, Midlands Residents Association and the rest of the wider ward. Thank you. Good morning, James Langler, Historic Environment Planning Advisor for Historic England. I'm Chris Wedgwood, just representing myself, thank you. Good morning, Michael Corse here, representing Full for Parish Council. Morning, Rose Hilton, Heslington Parish Council. Uh, good morning, Bev Heap, Heslington Parish Council. Uh, thank you very much for that. Good morning and um, welcome all. Um, Carol, um, can we ask you just to do the, um, the housekeeping announcement, please? Um, or so oh, Laura, sorry. Right. Uh, yeah, um. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, just a few notes on housekeeping for those that um, haven't been with us um, before now. No fire alarm is scheduled during the inquiry today. Um, if the alarm does sound, please make your way to the nearest exit and gather in the corner of Claremont Terrace outside the GMB building. Um, please don't stop to retrieve any belongings, but exit the building quickly and safely using the green fire exit routes. Um, please don't enter the building until a fire marshal or member of the fire brigade tells you to do so. Um, on door security, please only use the main doors to access and exit the building. Uh, for security purposes, do not use the side door unless you're a wheelchair user or unable to unlock and relock the door after you, or, and someone is able to unlock and relock the door after you. Um, please don't let anyone into the building who you don't know. York City Church or the Citadel support staff are generally available to help um, if you're unsure of anything. Please also be aware that the Citadel staff uh, will be working during the time of the inquiry today and there are also CYC language classes taking place, so there are other users in the building. Toilets are situated on the ground floor in the corridor adjacent to the main hall. Um, should any of the facilities need attention, please let a member of the staff know. 
Plenty of drinking water is available in the main hall for attendees uh, in the foyer for members of the public. In terms of other refreshments, uh, Giddygate has a range of shops and um, coffee shops for something to eat, and there's a Sainsbury's Ex Express on Bootham. Just a reminder about filming, if you've got um, any concerns about being filmed today, please let Carol, our programme officer, know, and she'll seat you somewhere um, suitable um, so that you aren't in view. Thank you. Okay, thank you um, very much for that. Um, so without any further ado then, um, I'm going to turn to um, our matter for today, um, universities and colleges. Um, yeah, so on the face of it, we've set out um, five <laughs> relatively simple um, questions um, to be explored um, today. But before I turn to the first of those, um, when we last um, spoke about um, universities and colleges. The council um, and representatives of the universities and colleges were going to go away um, and discuss matters. Um, so can we ask, please, um, where, where are we with that? Uh, essentially a part. Uh, we, we, we cannot agree with the university's assessment which justifies a greater removal of land from the proposed green belt than is proposed. Um, we had, despite requests for this many weeks ago, we only had the council's figures, uh, the university's figures last Monday. Um, Mr. Keyes spotted errors in it immediately. We then received a revised version uh, following that, upon which we based our hearing appendix one. Uh, we've then had two attempts to revise it this week, we had a revised version on Monday, which deleted bits, and we had another version yesterday afternoon. Um, and it's still yet to be clarified, although I've asked for clarification, as to what the changes are. But the simple fact remains, whatever the uh, issues with regard to which version of their evidence uh, we're now to take as definitive, um, the simple position is we do not think that the council, the um, university, has justified its claim to take uh, even more land than the council proposes to allocate. And uh, we can expand on that in due course. This is not to say, I hasten to add, that we are not supportive of the university in general, that we don't see it as a huge benefit to York, mm. that it, we, don't, uh, we dispute that it has economic benefits. We just don't think the university has done its job to justify what it needs. And we've been provided with figures which are said to be simplistic, and they backtrack from the original 4%, which was originally said to be the figure for growth. Uh, and Mr. Keyes can expand on this in due course. Yes, having seen the, um, the statements, we feared um, that that was the case. Mr. Tucker, um, is, that a f is that a fair reflection of the current position? Has, in effect, no progress been made? Um, I th Mr. Elvin's made a reference to the university's evidence. Can I come to that last of all? Because there are four clients that I'm representing here. There, there are draft statements of common ground uh, behind the scenes in relation to all four clients, and you will have seen from the council's evidence that there's significant movement with regard to Ask and Brian, which we're grateful for. It's not quite as much movement as is necessary, but nonetheless, we are grateful for the council's movement in that regard. Um, can I just put matters in context? My clients, uh, in terms of the University of York, have been ma making representations since 2018 there have been three lots of representations, detailed representations, uh, back in July of last year from all four of my clients. Um, in terms of dialogue, um, when we were in York races uh, all, those days, all those years ago before the world changed, uh, we, we specifically approached the, uh, the, uh, the uh, authority, said, look, you've got our figures at that stage, which are not... Uh, dramatically different to the figures that are uh, before you within the hearing statement. Um, we would like a dialogue and we'd like to agree common ground. We repeated that again uh, when we were here some weeks ago. Uh, uh, it's disappointing that we are uh, uh, crossing swords across the, uh, 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 the floor of an examination, 
particularly when the information that was produced in the Cushman and Wakefield report we saw for the first time on Monday morning of this week. Um, the person who's written the document which is on the back of our hearing statement is currently enjoying sun, or probably less sun than he would have enjoyed if he'd been here, frankly, uh, which is Mr Nichols. Um, so in terms of the content of the document that's been produced, uh, it's not been shared with us, it's not been discussed with us behind the scenes, and I'm not in a position to deal with the, with the observations. My learner friend makes reference to there being changes. There was an amendment on the 5th of July, and it's the 5th of July version that, that we wish to bring, bring forward. It's right to say that we looked at a number of different scenarios because there, there are a number of different ways of uh, cutting the particular cake because there are uncertainties when, it, when looking over a planned period, which is why we went for a likely scenario. But in terms of the criticisms which are raised within this document, um, I think, um, sir, you, you have seen our correspondence behind the scenes that we're simply not in a, in a position to deal with it in terms of the University of York because the personnel uh, is simply not in the country. Um, so I'm slightly hampered and frankly disappointed that after a four-year process we get the council's evidence and response on matters uh, a matter of a couple of days before we start. Now having said all that, yes of course this is responding to the hearing statements and the documents on the back of the hearing statement, but to talk about that in isolation from the vast amount of information that's been provided thus far it, it is um, a partial view. Um, so you will have seen our request that in terms of dealing with that document that we would prefer to deal with that in writing rather than disrupt the examination today. Certainly some of the observations contained within it, even from my lay eyes, are problematical and speculative, but it's a document that should have been produced in discussion with the university, not throwing brickbats at the university, uh, and it's disappointing we're, we're doing that at this stage. In terms of um, the other uh, 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 three bodies. There are draft statements of common ground around. We're waiting for a response and ask and Brian, for example. Um, but so far as I'm aware, ah, the, the ones in relation to St. Peter's School and the one in relation to York St. John University, I'm told, are signed. Um, so I don't know whether those have made their way to the programme officer as yet. Well, I hear Mr. Tucker, Tucker's special pleading. What he can't explain to you is why it took until last Monday for the detailed information that we'd requested about a month and a half ago to reach us, which, is, uh, which reached us last Monday and then was immediately corrected on Tuesday, we have had to deal with a rolling change in information from the university, and yet, despite having been timetabled for this week some weeks ago, the university can't make available its own, its own expert in order to deal with it. Um, with respect, Mr Tucker's special pleading does not cut any ice. From our perspective, <clears throat> this is all very disappointing and frankly very, very frustrating. Um, and it puts us um, in quite a difficult um, position um, to actually deal uh, with some of these issues. And frankly, it feels like what we're doing here is plan making rather than examining a plan. Um, so just so I'm absolutely clear, Mr. Tucker, what, what are the things that you can't deal with today, you say? Well, in terms of the uh, allegations of errors within, within the mathematics of the documentation, uh, I'd need Mr. Nichols' view in relation to that, and he's uncontactable. In terms of some of the broader themes within the Cushman and Wakefield report, we have the Vice-Chancellor turning up at half past 11 in the light of uh, the way in which it's been handled by the City Council uh, to address matters. Um, so we can deal with things in the broader sense, um, but in terms of more detailed points, then we would need more time to deal with those. And as I indicated, sir, I'm, we, we would prefer to deal with that in writing rather than disrupt matters further or ask for a further hearing session or anything of that nature. I wasn't aware there are any mathematical issues remaining to be resolved because I think the corrections that we received later accepted the errors that had been pointed out by Mr. Keyes. That, that, that may be right, um, but I need Mr. Nichols to confirm that. <laughs>
Um, can you just clarify, Mr. Tucker? Um, so, <clears throat> on issue 2.1, that's the, the question of the need. Um, I, I think we think that what, what you're saying is that you're, you're not going to be able to confirm the figures in relation to the University of York. Is that is that right? Uh, th that's right in terms of the uh, specificity of the figures, but in terms of the generality of the argument, we absolutely will be able to. So, f to pick an example. Um, a per student floor space of 25 square metres rather than 29 square metres. Um, that's the sort of thing I would need Mr Nicholl sitting next to me and what the mathematical consequence of, of that is, for example. Um, but in terms of the generality of the arguments, yes, we can deal with the generality of the arguments, but in terms of uh, suggested increasing densification uh, of the existing uh, campus, for example, knocking down buildings and increasing their footprints, for example, those are points that we can deal with in the generality, but frankly, this, is, this should have been raised in terms of a dialogue. There should have been a discussion in relation to this, not simply we want information, then we'll write a report, then we'll drop the report on you two days before uh, you're turning up at an examination which has been going on for Mr. years. Mr Tucker, it was provided to everybody on Friday. The fact that your team can't check the website and answer, Ms. O um, answer Carol's emails is not our problem. You failed to pick it up on time. I, I don't know if that's helpful, sir, and I don't know if you want my response to that. No, I don't. Um, See, that leaves us facing the problem that um, one large part of the puzzle that we're exploring today, um, I'm, I'm not sure that we're going to get, well, we're not, are we going to get the detail um, of that for certain? We might get a general picture, um, but this is quite important um, and it has implications for other areas of the plan as well as I'm, I'm sure you, you perfectly well understand. Um, we, it seems, are going to be asked to decide which figures um, we're going to favour rather than there being any sort of um, agreement between the parties and therefore it's pretty important to us that we fully understand the arguments underpinning the specific figures being put forward by what is in effect, unfortunately, both sides. And I take your point, Mr Tucker, that um, you'd be happy to deal with the specificity and detail in writing at a later date, we're not currently sure that we're happy to leave it, leave this particular matter to something in writing, um, to be honest. Um, and we'll, we'll need to maybe discuss that during an adjournment later. Yeah, I mean, you know, this issue is so important, frankly, that we're half wondering whether there's much point being here today. But um, what we think um, is that we will continue um, and we'll hear um, from, from you, Mr. Tucker, um, what you are able um, to say to us um, in, in terms of how we then deal with matters going forward. You're shaking your head, Mr. Elvin. I mean, the problem is, if we're not going to hear what the university's response is. I'm not willing to call evidence because uh, Ms. Mr. Keyes needs an opportunity to have a look at it. And, and this issue about dialogue that Mr. Tucker has been um, emphasizing, the fact is the university is not interested in our view. We simply have a situation where there's a disagreement as to the space requirements. We don't dispute the generality that the university needs to expand, hence the allocation of 27 hectares. We just don't agree that they've justified the position for what they're seeking. Um, it's, not, it's not a huge matter of principle. It's a matter of detail, and quite important detail at that. Uh, well, we certainly um, think so. Yes. So I'm not quite sure what you're, what you're saying, Mr. Elvin, in terms of how we proceed for today. Well, if you think we're going to need another hearing session, I think we better just put it over to another hearing session and deal with the, the other three institutions today. I mean, I'm very reluctant to say that because the timetable's so tight. 
Well, yes, so are we. <laughs> uh, um, well, you're, you're, it's more, more, more your difficulty than mine. Yeah, okay. So, so, so can I, I make an, ob an observation um, b before perhaps you decide what, what you wish to do? Um, there are some general points that are made within the, uh, the Council's hearing statement and the Cushman and Wakefield document. For example, online learning will reduce the need for additional floor space. For example, the university hasn't considered, apparently, um, issues of the reuse of its own stock and increased uh, uh, density. Um, uh, the uh, City Council thinks that we should be expanding the campus in some uh, unknown locations around the city centre, um, although I look forward to, to identifying where those sites might potentially be in due course. Um, the generality of those sort of points we could certainly deal with today. In terms of what the precise area is in, in relation to the growth aspirations, uh, uh, then that's, that's the concern that I have in terms of dealing with that today. Um, yeah, we, we um, have decided, uh, we have decided um, that in terms of the University of York, uh, we're not going to be able to um, discuss that today. Um, the, the problem that you get with discussing generalities is that, is that one thing affects another um, and we, we could end up in something of a pickle. I'm not prepared to, to be there because frankly this is a mess enough already. Um, two other things. Um, is there going to be mileage um, in, in the two parties engaging wholeheartedly in further discussions so that we don't have a repeat um, of this sort of scenario in the future? Um, and the second point is, you mentioned, Mr. Tucker, some statements of common ground that have been signed. Um, we haven't seen them, um, so I'm, I'm not sure what those say. So are they winging their way to us? Uh, they relate to St. Peter's School uh, and to York St. John University. I confess it's news to me. I was stuck in traffic, so literally burst through the door. You may have seen, sir, um, at, at 9.30. Um, I'm told that those two are signed. Uh, the one for Ask and Brian, I'm told, is agreed but not yet signed. We're waiting for the, university, uh, for the City Council's um, signature on it. Um, uh, there may be some logic in perhaps you're receiving those in hard copy and then before we, we kick off, uh, um, and perhaps having a look over a 10-minute cup of coffee. Yeah, is, is that right? And particularly in relation to the Ask and Brian one, is, is that, that is agreed but just not signed as yet. I, th I think there might be a tweak, but I think we're just about there on Ask and Brian. Yep. Yes, and I, I think that would be sensible. And, and sir, in relation to your point about whether there's, there's continued dialogue um, <coughs> for, for two organisations of the importance of the City Council and the universities of the city, um, particularly represented by two such retiring characters as myself and Mr. Elvin, um, we are here. Um, I'm sure that we could use the time that is available during the course of the day to at least identify what areas should be agreed to provide some sort of meaningful statement of common ground. For example, item number one, we both agree there's a need for expansion and we both agree there's exceptional circumstances for Greenbelt uh, 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 need. Item two, what that might contain. So I'm pretty sure that myself and my learner friend could at least make progress with our respective clients during the course of the day. Well, I don't think it's exceptional circumstances because we have so a fine green belt. But I'm uh, so sorry. Justification, I think. I, I'm just viewing this as exceptional. <laughs> have you two been involved in the discussions outside of the hearings before? No. Well, it's not for me to give either of you instruction, obviously, but it might help significantly um, if you were to receive such instructions. I'd also like to have Mr. Keyes meeting with his opposite number when he's returned from sunning himself. That, that's a given. Mm. 
weekend. At the weekend, apparently. Um, yeah, so just, just for those of you um, who, who might, might be here for the first time, um, our hearing sessions aren't normally like this. <laughs> um, what um, we want to do now, um, if we're able, um, is to um, well, take a short break, um, because um, that was all very exciting um, and I need to sit down, um, so that we can read the, um, the statements of, of common ground. Um, so are they immediately available in hard copy? They are, good, okay. Um, Mr Langler. Yes, just to say that we were only attending to, to talk about the university um, at the campus east, so you want to if go it's home. all right with you, I'll, I'll pop back to the office. <laughs> A bit smarter than usual. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Uh, sorry, Councillor Waters. I was just going to say very much the same, Inspector, if, if you wouldn't mind excusing me. Um, can I just check that um, this morning's proceedings won't have any impact on what you're discussing tomorrow? Yeah, I know. We, we um, thought about that. Um, and we're going to have to think about it some more, frankly. Um, that's something that um, Mr. Griffiths and I are going to need to talk about um, during the adjournment um, because it's quite complicated and there are interrelationships between, between the two topic areas and that's why we put them together um, in the timetable in the way that we have. We're going to need to discuss that. Um, if there is any change in relation to the timetable tomorrow, all I can say, you know, if we decide that we need to pull the sessions tomorrow, for example, we will make sure that that goes up on the website. So, so please do keep your eye out. Thank you, sir. Mr. Corsier. Thank you, sir. Can I just remind you that, of course, this isn't a two-sided fight, that there are other parties involved oh, no, in this no, matter? You, you can if you want, but you need not. <laughs> Uh, so, so the, um, in relation to tomorrow, we are not attending, but we were hoping to deal, of course, with ED3 and SS20 today in relation to student housing, because they, they, there's, I, as I understand, H10, it was only H10 to be considered tomorrow, so we would like to reserve that right whenever we come back to this hearing. But, sir, can I, I was going to raise a procedural point with you at some point, and we are getting increasingly concerned about the submission of key evidence by the council very late in the process. Um, we are getting evidence which really should have been at, at submission coming in, so with the time with hearing statements, and indeed sometimes later, sir. The whole of this process is meant to be inquisitorial, which you have the views of all parties on that evidence in writing before you start the hearings. If you don't, sir, the hearings have little purpose because much of the evidence which has been submitted to you has, is very complex, very technical, is not of the type which we can easily deal with in verbally in submissions of this type. And so this is causing major problems to ourselves trying to deal with this huge amount of evidence that's come in. And so I'll give you just one example. We have something on gypsies coming in on the website yesterday. We, we, sir, have made written representations on the policy on that, but we are not appearing. So how do we actually practically comment on that evidence? So this is, they are major, major problems. That evidence should have been presented many, many months ago and subject of consultation. It shouldn't be coming in at this point. Is that the, um, are, are you referring to the, modifi the modification that comes as a result of the revised GTAA that was submitted a couple, couple of weeks, oh well. No sir, no, I, I'm referring weeks, to obviously. the document which appeared yesterday on the website, which was the assessment of needs. The GTAA? Yes. And that's, uh, it's key evidence. Uh, it well been... yes, yes it is. Um, and. and... On, on that particular point, I, I mean, I would say to the council, we had no idea um, that the council was doing a new GTAA, let alone that one was likely to, to come in. Um, so that did catch us by, by surprise as well. Well, the material was filed in accordance with your directions last week. I don't know why it only went on the website yesterday. What came through yesterday was a response. Yesterday, your, traveller. The, your, your traveller trust response. 
I mean, the material we put in, we put in on time. So I don't want to be sidetracked on, on one particular piece of evidence. That is the type of evidence that should have been subject, because it is key evidence that should have been subject to a process of consultation with the opportunity to make written representations well before the hearings. The hearing statements are not meant to be the vehicle to put in key evidence by the council. And that is what they have been used for at the present moment, and that is affecting the ability of this examination to adopt its inquisitorial role. And so this is a matter which is contrary to the, the PIN's guidance on, the, on this. We should not be having to deal with hundreds of pages of evidence sir, uh, at this late stage. There is a similar document coming in on ST15, so, which we have had no option to make written representations put, it, put in front of you. This is not the procedure that should be adopted. Um, yeah, was there anything else you wanted to, to say on that, Mr. Corsier? No, sir, I just wanted to make that point. Okay. Um, Mrs. Hilton. Thank you. Um, Heslington Parish Council is also really only here today for discussing the expansion of the University of York. Um, I just wanted to echo what Mr. Corsier said, that there is another view, which is that, that, that there isn't a need for an expansion in terms of more land, and I'm just wanting to confirm that we'll have the opportunity to put that point of view at some point, and, and whether, we'll be, whether we'll have a timely schedule produced so that we can arrange that. Are you all right, Mrs O'Neill? Okay, um, yeah, um, as, as um, I, I said, um, a minute ago, so yeah, we are we are we are not going to leave the University of York just to be dealt with um, in in writing. We we are going to have a hearing about it. Um, it's just unfortunate that that's now not not going to be um, today. So precisely when that can be? Well, frankly, it's going to be September at the earliest, um, which is when the phase four um, hearings um, are arranged for. So. Um, there's going to be no, no practical, in practical terms, there's no opportunity um, and, until then um, because of our availability amongst other things, so. Mr. Wedgwood. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, I, I just wanted to ask a quick question. Does this mean potentially that section 2.3 won't be heard today? Um, it's just that the point that I've come to sort of raise is general about the university but isn't dependent on the figures that they're all arguing about? Um, not in relation to the University of York. So um, if we can finish this discussion at some point and, and start talking about the, the, the um, other university and colleges, um, uh, we will be covering all of the issues in relation to the other um, establishments but just, just not the University of York. Um, yes, yeah, so, um, it, it is the University of York that I actually wanted to speak about, but it's not... Yeah, it's a common theme. <laughs> um, but, but it's not related to um, the particular figures and, and their expansion. I mean, uh, if it doesn't happen today, then I suppose it'll just have to be rescheduled for another... <laughs> yeah, I, I, we won't be doing that today for certain. Thank you, sir. Um, I don't know if there's any, anything that you wanted to comment on, Mr. Elvin, um, out of that, but we, we, before we just take a short adjournment now. Uh, no. Okay. Are these statements of common ground long? Uh, no, they're not, sir. I'm not sure if that's good news or bad news, but um, in any event, okay. About 10 pages, sir, for the two that I've got. Okay, thank you. You've got more than I have, Mr. Tucker. 
Yeah, if, if, if you could give us an extended break and we'll have them brought to you as soon as they're available. Half an hour. Okay, I make it roughly um, five past ten. I'll adjourn the hearing to resume at uh, 10.35. Thank you. <laughs>